President Donald Trump said Sunday the confirmation process for his Supreme Court pick will go very quickly as he will pick the right person He offered no clue as to who that right person may be, however, as Democrats have complained Republicans should not hold hearings in an election year if they would not do so in 2016 for then-President Barack Obama's nominee The president acknowledged the confirmation process could get contentious. It's probably going to be vicious because the other side, all they can do obstruct and resist. He told Sunday Morning Futures on Fox News. They're going to try very hard, but I think it's going to go actually very quickly if I pick the right person, he added. But the confirmation of Trump's first Supreme Court pick, Neil Gorsuch, went smoothly and was seen as one of the few early successes of the administration Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy announced Wednesday he would retire, which many see as a chance for Trump to shape the court in a more conservative direction The president has indicated he understands the heavyweight his pick will carry on the future laws of the country Honestly, if the Democrats would have won the election, first of all, you would have had a lot different If you look at the last four decisions in the Supreme Court at 5-4, they would have all been reversed, he said on Fox News As president, I mean obviously outside of war and peace, the biggest decision you can make is the selection of a Supreme Court justice, he added The president has a list of 25 names he is working off of to pick Kennedy's replacement and he said on Friday that he narrowed those options down to five, including two women Everybody on that list is outstanding, but I'm going to pick somebody who's outstanding, he said on Fox News Trump has said he'll name a nominee on July 9 the day before he leaves on a trip to Europe Share this article Share the Washington Post reported on Sunday that Trump has three qualities he's looking for in a member of the bench He wants extraordinarily well-qualified nominee with a superlative resume and name brand degrees He also wants his nominee be not weak, meaning someone with independent judgment and the courage to buck the political and social fashions of the day, an advisor to the president on the issue told the newspaper Finally Trump wants a nominee who will interpret the Constitution the way the framers meant it to be His short list is said to include Thomas Hardiman, a federal appeals court judge in Pittsburgh who was a finalist in the last search, U S. Appeals Court Judge Amy Coney Barrett of Indiana U.S. Circuit Judge Brad M. Kavanaugh of Maryland, a former Kennedy law clerk, U S. Circuit Judge Raymond Kethledge of Michigan, who was a finalist in the last search, and you S. Appeals Court Judge Amal Thaper of Kentucky. Democrats, however, are trying to slow down the process A vote before the election would put the red state Democrat senators up for re-election in states Trump won in 2016 under intense pressure, a party's liberal base that wants them to vote no versus a majority of constituents that supported the president Plus if the Democrats were to gain Senate seats in the 2018 election, that could also hold up the confirmation process I would love that because I want to make sure that we have enough time," Senator Maria Cantwell, a Democrat from Washington state, said on Meet the Press's Sunday morning when asked about delaying a confirmation vote until after the election 
Democratic leaders also argue a newly installed Senate could consider the nominee in early 2019. They point out the delay would keep the precedent Republican Senate leader Mitch McConnell said in 2016 when he put off consideration of Merrick Garland until after the presidential election. We should wait until after the election year, Democratic Senator Amy Klobuchar told ABC's This Week. All we're saying is you should let the people have a say in this critical position and have this vote after the election. But to me, what's more important is the decision that's being made right now by the president and that we must continue to weigh in on having a balanced person that's going to look at the law and look at precedent and make decisions based on the law. Trump has already begun his courtship of those key Senate votes to get his nominee confirmed. On Thursday evening he met with Judiciary Committee Chairman Chuck Grassley. Additionally he met with lawmakers seen as the important swing votes, Republican Senators Susan Collins and Lisa Murkowski and Democratic Senators Joe Manchin, Joe Donnelly and Heidi Heitkamp, all of whom voted yes on Gorsuch. Collins told ABC's This Week of the 25 names on Trump's list, there are people on that list whom I could not support. She said she told the president, I was looking for a nominee that would demonstrate a respect for precedence, a long-standing a vital tenet of our judicial system. I also suggested that he broaden his search beyond the list of 25 nominees. The White House counsel told me that there have been a few additional potential nominees added to that list. But I think the president should not feel bound by that list and instead should seek out recommendations to ensure that he gets the best possible person. The president is in New Jersey this week, but he's working on narrowing down his nominee. He's spoken with White House counsel Don McGahn on the Supreme Court vacancy and has reportedly started interviewing contenders. The president reiterated he would not ask the nominee to state their position on Roe v. Wade. Probably not, Trump said on Fox News. I'm putting conservative people on, and I'm very proud of Neil Gorsuch. He has been outstanding. His opinions are so well written, so brilliant, and I'm going to try and do something like that, but I don't think I'm going to be so specific in the questions I'll be answering. And I'm actually told that I shouldn't be, he said. When asked about his promise in the campaign that abortion should be up to the states, the president said that may become the case. Maybe someday it will be to the states. You never know how that's going to turn out. That's a very complex question. The Roe v. Wade is probably the one that people are talking about in terms of having an effect, but we'll see what happens, but it could very well end up with states at some point, Trump said. Collins and Murkowski are two pro-life Republican senators whose votes are critical to Trump confirming his nominee. Collins told ABC News that a candidate of this import position who would overturn Roe v. Wade would not be acceptable to me because that would indicate an activist agenda that I don't want to see a judge have. And that would indicate to me a failure to respect precedent a fundamental tenet of our judicial system. And Republican Senator Lindsey Graham hinted he'd have objections to a nominee that would want to overturn the landmark case that legalized abortion. I'm pro-life and the job of a judge is to call, decide cases before the court. 
but one of the concepts that really means a lot in America is stare decisis. That means you don't overturn precedent unless there's a good reason, and I would tell my pro-life friends, you can be pro-life and conservative, but you can also believe in stare decisis. Roe v. Wade, in many different ways, has been affirmed over the years, he said on NBC's Meet the Press.